haven't even said goodbye to 2018 yet, but already several Democrats are out there indicating that they may actually run for president in 2020. You got a whole lot of potential candidates, including former Vice President Joe Biden and New Jersey Senator Cory Booker. They're reportedly spending the holiday discussing their next moves with family and friends. So who actually has the best shot to take on President Trump? We're asking National Taxpayers Union senior fellow Maddie Duffler, Catalina Magazine publisher Kathy Aru, and Washington Examiner's Phil Wegman. Good to see you all. Who's your money on, Kathy? <laughs> uh, Bloomberg. My Mike Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Yeah. My yeah. old boss, by the way. <laughs> yeah, my uh, Bloomberg. You know, I've heard a lot of talk about him. I think he actually um, is probably looking at this uh, fairly seriously. Uh, I know that he's looked at it seriously in the past, but as an right. independent. So in this case, he'd be running in the Democratic field. Uh, the president himself th told me, Kathy, he does not think, President Trump that is, that uh, Mike Bloomberg would be able to make it through the field because the party has gotten so aggressively left. Your thoughts? Um, the, the party's a little bit everywhere, so no one's quite sure uh, where they are, but the party is energized. That's, we do know that. They're energized. We learned that with the midterms. Mm -hmm. So with the energy comes a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you don't know what's going to appeal to these um, voters. So Bloomberg has a great shot because Republicans like him, uh, the Democrats like mm -hmm. him. So no, he's, a, yeah. he's a little more, though, down the middle, and when you've got yeah. a party that is you know, fascinated by the likes, uh, Maddie, of uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, and was so smitten with Bernie Sanders. How does someone who's more down the middle actually play in that field? I think that that is a very good question. Democrats have a really big challenge ahead of them, and that is that a lot of the Democrats who are running for president actually have to govern. These are United States senators. Uh, they actually have to keep the government open. They have to focus on the priorities in Washington, D.C. Now, people like a Michael Bloomberg or even a Beto O'Rourke now, who has become sort of the darling of the left, are a little bit liberated. They don't have to take hard votes in Congress. They can go out there and really start to campaign right away. So I think that's where you'll see a lot of divisions arise within the Democratic primary, the folks who actually have to do their job and show up in Washington and take the hard votes, and then the guys who really can go out there and try and set the agenda through rhetoric and through campaign events, and that's going to be a hard challenge. Phil, you know, you think back on Joe Biden, and he kind of missed that moment, if you would, because he had that everyday kind of speak, mm -hmm. right, that, that was very right. appealing to, I think, everyday Americans in a way that, frankly, Hillary Clinton just couldn't possibly <laughs> do. So <laughs> do, Joe Biden's also looking at this. Do you foresee uh, Joe Biden on the, on the, at the top of the Democratic ticket? Well, I don't think that Joe Biden is going to make the, the same mistake that he made in 2016. I think that he definitely is looking closer at jumping back into the race. But I think the better question right now is who isn't looking to jump into the race right now? Because mm -hmm. if you're a Democratic governor or congressman uh, or even mayor or dog catcher, you've got to be looking around right now and asking yourself, why not? Why not run for president? Everyone is doing it. And I think the reason why is that what we saw in 2016 is you had Hillary Clinton, who was an eminently qualified candidate, win the nomination and then lose to Donald Trump, who didn't have a lot of the qualifications that we used to think were required for the presidency. In 2016, the elites lost. And now I think the playing field is open for everyone. Yeah, it, you know, 2016 was a unique moment in time. And I think that President Trump is a unique kind of candidate. I don't know is that kind of uh, personality would play uh, again mm. or for others. I mean, it works for him, and it, it worked brilliantly for him. But then when you, you think about the field, remember when Marco Rubio tried to hurl some insults mm. at him? It just didn't, it didn't sit right. They weren't able to do it with the same panache, maybe because it wasn't natural. And so to be a natural politician, you really kind of have to... Uh, be yourself. You have to be authentic. And so when you look at that field, let me go back to you, Kathy. I know that you like Mike Bloomberg, but who are the examples of the most authentic politicians? Like uh, like a Cory Booker. I mean, he, he's always always on point. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I don't know sorry. about Cory Booker. I, 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 think, I think that that, that is just... Uh, uh, Cory Booker I, has I, come I, under a lot of criticism of for yeah. faking his resume in a lot of different uh, but, but Cory Booker, for, well, I mean, Trump came under a lot of criticism for so Absolutely. many things that he did. So the Cory Booker is almost the answer to the Donald Trump. Uh, so he is so controversial. He is 
out there. He's so loud. Um, he could really get this energized base more energized. So I don't know. Cory Booker is a, kind of like a Trump. I'll tell you who I worry about as a Republican. Amy Klobuchar from Minnesota. I find mm. her to be very, very reasonable, very persuasive. I think that she could really give um, Republicans, you know, really uh, start to inoculate some Republican criticisms of the Democratic ticket. If she were to jump in the race, I really think that she might be a strong point. For you know, that. you've also got Kamala Harris out there um, who's a looking at throwing her hat in the ring. She's been pretty divisive, I would argue. Um, and I think she has been someone who really has tried to, to make this push towards identity politics. Does identity politics even work anymore? I mean, given uh, Phil, <laughs> the, it, it certainly didn't fly with Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what we're going to see with Kamala Harris is she's going to have to come to account with her record as an attorney general in California and see whether or not that actually plays well with the liberal base going forward. But something that I think is really important to remember here while we're throwing out all of these names and, you know, after the holidays, we'll have a better idea of who's in and who's out. But this is an incredibly crowded field, and because it's so crowded, whoever wins the nomination, they don't need a majority. They only need a plurality. That gives uh, that can you know it gives voters more choice, absolutely. But it means that we're not going to necessarily have a consensus candidate at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I think that that clears the lane, maybe for some of these elder statesmen like Biden or some of these senators like Booker, who have been making a name for themselves because they don't need a majority. They only need a plurality, and they need to be able to hold on to the end. I'll tell you one thing, it'll certainly be interesting, and hey, we don't even know, right? Because you think about Donald Trump at this stage in the game really wasn't out there uh, in any kind of serious way, and now here he is, the President of the United States today. So look, it's anyone's guess. That field could get even bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys, it's good to see you. Merry Christmas. Merry Coming Christmas. up, everyone, we have some great news for the record number of travelers hitting the roads this holiday season.